Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If you are based in the UK, the Back to Mac scheme ends on the 31st of March. Back to Mac, for anyone who doesn't know, is, is a scheme where you can take six empty, I believe they have to be full size products, Back to Mac and get a free lipstick. It is coming to an end at the end of this month. So with that in mind, I thought what I would do, do a Mac lipstick collection and declutter video go through all of the lipsticks that I have, swatch them all, show you them in cutaways on my face. On that note of the cutaways, some of them I've been filming like back to back, putting a lipstick on, taking it off, putting a new one back on. Um, so the application in the cutaways is not necessarily like my best lipstick application ever. It's been more about let's get these cutaways of all these lipsticks. So uh, do bear that in mind as they come up. But yeah, I thought we would go through what I own. And as I have been saying in terms of this year being my year that I want to rotate through things and find what's gone off, there are definitely a few that have gone off. And there's some that I might just be ready to get rid of because my tastes have changed. So I thought I would do this video with you today, go through my lipstick collection. I think what I'll maybe do is if there's any that I really like that I have had for ages that I think have gone off, I'll maybe just replace with a new version of something I've already owned. I definitely have that in mind already for Chili, so spoiler alert for when we get to that one. My Chili I bought in London in I think 2014. It's, it's one of my oldest lipsticks, but it's one of my favourites, but I think what I'll do is use six of my items to get a new chilli. But yeah, I thought there might be some others in the collection that had also gone off that I might want to replace or just some that I might be ready to say goodbye to. So let's get on into the MAC lipsticks that I own and see if I want to get rid of any of them. I'm going to start with my nude lipsticks. So I have five here that I'm going to term nudes. Nude lipstick is something I don't actually wear very often. I think I need a bit of colour about my face. I'm very, very pale, um, but I've got quite dark eyes. I've got naturally very dark like, body hair, dark eyelashes, etc. Obviously, I've got mascara on just now, but uh, generally I have quite dark lashes anyway. And I think sometimes nudes can really wash me out. So just to say ahead of the cutaways, I've done really like basic makeup for the cutaways so that the lip could be center stage. But I think for me, nudes can actually be much harder work to wear than like a sort of muted red which I, I feel would kind of be an easier colour for me to throw on and sort of tone in. I feel like when I do nudes I really need to do an eye and I really need to balance the rest of my face to kind of make up for the nudes. So just to flag up the makeup that I'm wearing with these lipsticks is not necessarily what I would actually wear to showcase these lipsticks as such but either way let's get on into them. So the first lipstick that I've got is Princess Incognito. This was from the Disney Aladdin collection. I think I bought this in 2019. Lauren and I got these when we were in London. And I'm going to say it was Christmas 2019. I think it was our last London trip before Covid. I won't spend too much time talking about this one because obviously it's limited edition. But I think probably in terms of an easy to wear nude, this is one of my easiest to wears. Um, it's one that I would throw in without too much thought, so I'm definitely going to keep this one. The other nude, and this is probably the least nude and the most, it's not a strong lip colour, but it's probably the strongest of the nudes that I'm going to show you today, is Stay Curious. So this is one of the Powder Kiss lipsticks. So I have put this in as a nude rather than a pink. It's the pinkiest of all the nudes, but it's definitely a sort of corally pink. It's not going down your sort of pink you know girl about town style pink it is very much a muted soft pink but I think I quite suit this one in terms of again another easy to throw on nude that I don't need to overthink. The third one I've got here this is a glaze finish which I think as a finish has been discontinued altogether from MAC. This was the shade Hot Tahiti and I really like this lipstick so you can see how much I've used of it so it really was down and I'd always actually kind of had the fantasy of putting this in a project pan. I thought I would finish this lipstick at some point, but it has definitely gone off. That was something I discovered when filming Cutaways. This one will be a declutter. I will just, I'll swatch it and show you. I really, really like it. It's actually, well, I mean, you can tell that from how much I've used of it. Bearing in mind, this has never been in a project pan or anything, so all that use is just organic use. So I do really, really like this one as a colour. It's something that I think I will miss having in my collection and um, but it has definitely turned so it is time for it to go. I can't replace it with being one of my free lipsticks that I would get back for my six items because it's been discontinued 
Um, but yeah, it's a reminder to use things because makeup is perishable. It's a reminder of why I do want to be decluttering regularly and not accumulating and sitting on a huge collection because it's all basically sitting there going off. So I'm really sad that this has gone off before I could finish it, but we'll take the lesson for what it is. I think you can see with those three swatches there, when I'm saying these are my easiest to wear nudes, like you can see a similarity between the three of them. You know, they're all nudes, but they've all kind of got something to them. Second last one that I would call nude is on a petal still. So this was from the, I believe this was called the Tempting Fate collection. The packaging in this collection was just so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. And this is the shade on a petal still. It's kind of a peachy shade. This is the sort of shade that I need to put a bit more thought behind than I have done in the makeup that I'm wearing in the cutaways. So I don't think this looks particularly flattering on me in the cutaways, but it is a shade that I really like. It's just a shade that if I'm wearing, I definitely need more makeup on the rest of my face to balance it. Give you a swatch, you will see it's definitely a sort of peachier tone. Really, really pretty though, I really like it, so I'm definitely not decluttering that one. And then the last nude that I've got is Yash. So Yash is kind of my go-to nude if I'm doing a smoky eye, but similarly to On A Petal Still, in the cutaways, this doesn't look great. It's not super flattering. It's one that if I'm wearing, although it's a nude, and I feel like, you know, in beauty speak, we talk about nudes and neutrals as being super easy to throw on. This, for me, is, although it's a nude in that it's very much a sort of elastoplast colour, um, it's not an easy to wear, throw on, relaxed colour for me. It's very much one that I have to plan to wear and have to plan the rest of my makeup to balance out the wearing of but it is kind of my go-to if I'm doing like a 60s look or a smoky eye or everything else is going to be quite heavy and I want the lip to kind of not blot out but take a back seat without looking a natural back seat if that makes any sense at all this would be my go-to so this is Yash so in comparison to the rest of them Yash really is that sort of elastoplast like yellow undertone nude so it's not the most flattering on the teeth i think these three are my easiest to wear this one's going off so we're decluttering it but you can see there's that same sort of yellow undertone between these two which are harder work for me to wear but that i do like when i plan to wear them So those five are what I'm going to term my nudes in my collection and I'm going to keep four but declutter Hot Tahiti. Moving on from nudes, I'm going to go on to pinks. I don't have a lot of true pinks. So the first one I've got here is Girl About Town. This had like a big, big moment in the early sort of 2010s, I'm going to say. This was a really, really iconic one for a while. So it's a really sort of bright pink, almost like a purpley undertone to it. Really, really pretty. I think for me though this is again a slightly older lipstick in my collection and I think when I was blonde I suited this kind of shade more but I feel like I just don't really suit it anymore now that I've gone you know back to a more natural hair colour. Although I do colour my hair this is much closer to my natural hair colour obviously than when I was dyeing my hair blonde and I feel like this I don't really feel like this suits me and I don't think you always need to keep things because they suit you and you know like I was saying with some of the nudes it's about the whole picture so like the lipstick on its own might not suit you but you can do other things with your makeup to balance it and to make it work as part of an overall picture but yeah I don't really think this massively suits me I don't really gravitate towards pink very often anyway so I don't have a lot of pinks which is good obviously because then I'm not it means I'm not buying loads and loads of pinks but I think this is probably one of the older ones that I do have in my collection. So I think it's maybe time to say goodbye to Girl About Town. The second pink that I have in my collection is a newer one. So I actually got this as a gift in 2020. I remember getting it. We were in lockdown. And this is from the bronzing collection and it's the shade Cote d'Amour. I got two lipsticks from this collection. Neither of them have seen a great amount of use overall because I've been project panning for the last few years, which... 
I feel like has meant a lot of my lipsticks have gone unloved as I've been concentrating on the ones in my project pan and because I did get it in lockdown like even when we came out of lockdown we were wearing masks for so long so I feel like I've not really had a chance to play with this lipstick properly even though if I got it in 2020 it's, it's literally coming up to three years old but I think that's a really scary thing about makeup is especially I think because the pandemic in those years have totally warped our perception of time but also the perception of time that we were wearing makeup because the face masks even when we were back out and about gave a sort of physical reason to not wear a lot of makeup um, and I certainly wasn't putting makeup on my face every day whilst we were at home so yeah I feel like this is a prime example of why I need to be pretty ruthless and get rid of some of the older ones because this feels so new in my collection and it's three years old so it's definitely technically expired I actually can't see but I'm sure it's probably going to say it's a 12 month sort of guideline for like cream products like lipsticks so this is definitely expired but I am not going to declutter this one I think this is the pink I'm going to keep so I will give you a swatch of it I think it suits me just slightly better than Girl About Town so that's the two of them next to each other I think if I was really into pink I could definitely justify keeping both of these but I'm not overly into it so I feel like this is the one I'm going to keep and I'm going to get rid of Girl About Town. And then the last one that I'm terming a pink, it's technically a berry. I'm going to take you through into berries and purples I think anyway, but my first pinky berry shade is Rebel in a similar colour family to Girl About Town but I think it being slightly darker and slightly more berry means for me I think I suit it more and I find it easier to wear. However this is quite an old one in my collection so as I've literally just said in terms of that quote them are feeling quite new and um, despite being three years old if I know that this is an old one it's definitely old in my collection so as much as I do like it and I would possibly repurchase it or ask for it as a gift or something at some point in the future. I think it's going to be time to say goodbye to Rebel. The next lipstick that I'm going to talk about is Studded Kiss. This is getting really... I think what I'm going to try and do is go from sort of pinky berries into burgundies. So you can see that there it's really going into the sort of ready burgundy as opposed to the pinks. I do think this is a really pretty one but I think what I'm maybe going to do is just keep this to one side at the moment. I am going to have a lot of shades like this. This is really getting into my sort of favourite shades are sort of orangey reds into burgundy brownie reds. That spectrum is definitely where the majority of my collection sits. So yeah that is Studded Kiss which I definitely do like so I don't feel inclined to declutter it but I'd quite like to look at it next to its peers before we make those decisions. The next one I'm going to show you is D for Danger, which is again, in fact I should have maybe done this one first because I think this is maybe slightly more berry and slightly less red, although it's still very much in this family as opposed to this family. So this is D for Danger. I do like that colour when I see it swatched and I do like it on myself but I don't love it and I definitely want to be getting rid of stuff unless it really makes the cut for me. I think when you like something but you don't love it and you have other things that you love you will always reach for what you love organically and what you like will always have to be something you make an effort to use and at that point if you're making an effort to use it and not getting the use out of other things is it better to just get rid of it and get the use out of things you really love before they go off I think it is so I think D for Danger is going to leave my collection so that is this one here next up I'm going to do Diva this is a matte one I'll put on the cutaways the names and the finishes because obviously I'm not saying them for every single one Diva I really like so I don't see me getting rid of this one do you know the more I look at, at this cutaway of Studded Kiss the more I like it so I think I'm probably keeping that one to be honest. Um, but here is Diva. See I feel like these two are close but I really like both of them. That was specifically why I said I'd keep this to the side because I thought these are so close in real life but I do really like both of them. 
to be honest. I feel like, so it's studded kiss and diva, I think they're so close that I'm a bit like, can I justify keeping both? And I think the answer to that is going to be in how many I am decluttering by the end really because I, I would like to keep both and they both are performing, neither of them feel like they've expired or anything like that. I think I bought them around the same time. So although they have expired technically, definitely in terms of whatever the, the usage would be, you know, from Mac's point of view, um, they both feel like they're they've not expired in terms of performing on my lips they still smell fine you know the texture is fine all of that kind of thing so practically in use i don't feel like they've expired this one definitely has and i'm quite sad about it so this is dubiny this was one of my absolute favorites and i think you'll just see a pattern here because i feel like studded kiss diva and dubiny are very much in the same family so let's get this swatched oh i love that shade so much it's a bit brighter on the arm than Diva or Studded Kiss, but it's definitely in that colour family, that kind of burgundy, but a browny burgundy rather than a purpley burgundy. It's beautiful, but this has definitely expired. So depending on how many I'm getting rid of, this is one I would possibly ask for one of my free lipsticks to be Dubonnet. It's such a beautiful shade. I mean, just look at that swatch. Is that not just stunning? Yes it is, if I do say so myself. And then the last one in terms of the brownie burgundies is actually what I've got on just now. This is Sin. This is another tragic one. This hasn't quite turned yet, but I think it's on its way. You know, the texture feels a bit draggy. You know, it is a matte, but you know, that way there's matte and then there's like matte that's gone off levels of draggy. You know what I'm saying? So this is Sin and this is one of the little minis that Mac do. So. This I don't think would count as one of my items if I was to take it back. You know, this wouldn't count as one of the six full-size items that we'd need to return to get a new one. But I do really, really love this shade. I think, like, my reason for buying the mini of this was because I knew I had a lot in this kind of shade family. So, unsurprisingly, there's Studded Kiss, Diva, Dubonnet, Sin. You know, they're very much related. Dubonnet is much brighter, but these three in particular are very very close. I do very much enjoy them. So I think what I'm going to do is put that studded kiss diva and sin. I'm going to put the three of them to one side and see how my numbers are looking at the end because really I would just like to keep all three of them because I really like all three of them. Whether I can really justify keeping all three of them it's possibly another another conversation, but we'll see what I can justify at the end. So I'm going to keep those three to one side for now. So moving on from the brownie burgundies, I'm going to do the purple burgundies. So the first one I'm going to show you is again from that Tempting Fate collection, and this is the shade Dusty Grape. Now this I would say is actually one of, like although it's called Dusty Grape and it looks quite dark in the bullet, it's not quite as dark as some of the others. This is sort of the entry level I would say. So this is Dusty Grape. You see what I mean? Like it's almost more in common with these kind of pinkier tones. But very, very pretty and I do very much enjoy it. It's just not, to me, it's not got the right name. You know, I was expecting Dusty Grape to be maybe even more like Sin above it. I'm a little bit conflicted in Dusty Grape. Basically, it's one of the newest things in my collection. And I do like the shade, but I just don't know if I love it. And I feel like maybe if it wasn't, this lipstick in this packaging I might be more inclined to declutter it than I am because it's this lipstick in this packaging. I am a little bit torn but I think again I'm going to put this to one side just now. I'll come back to my like put to one side pile at the end and we can be ruthless at that point. The next one that I'm going to show you is Media. That is what this one looks like. This is really getting into the proper purpley burgundies now. I am going to keep this one for now. I do really, really like it. I quite like that it's a satin formula as well, so it's a little bit easier to wear if my lips are a bit dry or chapped or whatever than one of my MAC Dark lipsticks. So at the moment, Media is staying. Then next to Media, I'm going to do my Viva Glam. Uh, this is Ariana Grande's Viva Glam collaboration, and it's beautiful. I love this lipstick so much. I mean, it's not the most used lipstick because it is so dark and vampy and 
you know, you need to decide when you're wearing a lipstick like that ahead of time and plan your outfit and whatever around it. You're not just going to like get ready and then be like, oh, I want to wear that today. You know, it takes thought process to wear this lipstick, but I do absolutely love it. I bought this going to New York one year. You know, it's also associated with that holiday. So you can see that's really getting into the purple. You know, you lose the slight warmth that media has in comparison. Really getting, you know, pinks, berries, burgundies into proper purples at the bottom here. But this is a definite keeper for me. I really, really like this lipstick. And then the last one from this colour family is Cyber. I know I'm decluttering this because it has actually I don't think it's completely gone off yet, but I think it's started to turn, so I don't think it'll even make like the end of this year. Like I think it's it's had its life. Again, a really, really lovely one, but one that you need to decide to wear in advance. So there we have it. That's what Cyber looks like. So if you if I said that Ariana Grande, you know, it's cooler toned than these others, Cyber's cooler again. I think again Cyber is another one that when I was blonde and I had that cooler toned hair it was maybe one that suited me slightly better whereas I feel like now eh, because my hair's warm and my eyes are warm um, and my skin tone's my skin tone's pretty neutral really like if you look at like I've got a lot of pink in my face but that's more to do with my eczema and rosacea um, whereas if you actually look at my neck it's pretty neutral um, but I think because of the warmth of my hair and eyes, I think anything that's too cool toned just doesn't really sit 100% correctly now for me. So that is Cyber. I loved it in its day, but it started to go off. And I think although Ariana Grande, like next to it there, you can tell Ariana Grande looks warmer than Cyber does. It's still quite a cool toned lipstick. You know, if I'm looking for that kind of look, but I think it's just a smidgen more flattering to the rest of my colouring so I'm going to wash my arm of these shades now and we'll add cyber to the decluttering pile. In terms of just checking in where we are, we've so far decluttered six here and decided to keep one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're, we're almost on equal footing actually in terms of what we've definitely decided to keep, definitely decided to get rid of. And then I have four here that I would like to keep but that I'm going to revisit at the end. So that's our stats at the moment is six gone, seven kept, four in purgatory. So now we're going to go into my favourite shades which are my sort of oranges into gingerbreads into ready browns. So let's get started with the orangey end of the spectrum. So I've got two kind of what I would term properly orangey shades and the first one is from the bronzing collection in 2020 and it's the shade Can Do. So this is what it looks like. It's actually a luster finish so it's not quite as bright as it looks. Well it is bright actually that's a bit of a lie to say it. It is a bright shade but it's not quite as neon as it looks in the bullet. So that is the bullet for you. But if you swatch it so you can see if you swatch it once you could just get this really really subtle shade. I do tend to work it up a little bit so that's kind of what I would end up with if I was using this shade. I feel like this is quite unique in my collection. I definitely am intending to keep this one and then the second sort of orangey shade I've got is from the Tempting Fake collection again and it's the shade Tarnished Reputation. This is a more muted orange than Can Do. It's probably almost a sort of nude, it's more of an orange than a nude, you know, it definitely didn't belong in the nude category, as you can see just even from the swatch, but it's definitely a sort of, I mean, it's, it's a, like a brick shade, a sort of terracotta -y shade almost, really, really pretty. So those are the two that I think of when I think about orangey lipstick shades in my collection. Definitely going to keep both of them. Another two of my favourite shades in my collection are Chili and Marrakesh. So I think I already said at the start of the video my Chili is very very old again as you can probably see from how much use I have had from it versus the majority of the lipsticks that I've shown you here. But I do absolutely love it but I am going to definitely 
take back. I mean, I've already, oh, I've decluttered six actually already, so I've definitely got one back to Mac from the lipstick declutters, and I already have a couple of Mac empties, so um, I can definitely, I've definitely got at least, I think, about three lipsticks I'll be able to get, um, and one of those will definitely be a new chili. But for now, let me swatch the one that I have for you. It is a beautiful colour. You know, it's, you can see, like, although this looks really terracotta on its own, I would say chili is a proper terracotta. So once I swatch that next to it, you can see that Tarnished Reputation is more of an orange. Chili's almost like sort of pumped up version of Tarnished Reputation. Tarnished Reputation, although I've got it in the Tempting Fate packaging, is actually in the permanent lineup now. So you can get this just normal packaging. These two shades are just two of my favourites. I think in terms of my colouring and having, you know, sort of red hair and like warm browny green eyes, like, you know, I think those sort of terracotta sort of gingerbread shades really work with that colouring. So uh, it's no surprise, I suppose, really, that they're my favourite. And the other one that I'm going to show you is the sort of darkest of my gingerbread shades and it is Marrakesh, which I just love. So you can see Marrakesh is really getting more into the browny end of the spectrum, but so so beautiful absolutely stunning shade since i've done marrakesh and that is going into that brownie territory i will do my two brown lipsticks first of all i have antique velvet so antique velvet is a much cooler toned stark brown although marrakesh was looking kind of brown compared to these two once you put a proper cool toned brown next to it you see that this is still very much in the terracotta family, but this is Antique Velvet. And then the other true brown that I would say I have in my collection is Double Fudge. So this is slightly warmer while still being a proper dark brown, but it's slightly warmer toned than Antique Velvet. So this is Double Fudge. Like, it's more red almost in comparison to Antique Velvet. Beautiful spectrum of shades in my arm there. Again, I will be keeping both Antique Velvet and Double Fudge. To get us back into the mindset that I am supposed to be decluttering here, I'm going to do these three next. So these are what I would call my orangey reds. So they're sort of the bridge between these shades that are proper gingerbreads and my kind of true red shades. And I definitely cannot justify keeping all three of these because they are very, very similar. First of all, I will swatch Dangerous for you. I absolutely love it. This is one of the retro matte formulas. And being a huge Peaky Blinders fan, I also love the name because Tommy's horse is called Dangerous, as anyone who is a Peaky Blinders fan will know. So, you know, I like that moment when I put it on in the mornings. Um, but yeah, let me swatch dangerous for you so i love the name but i do also just love the color so then it's there really really beautiful so dangerous is a retro matte formula and the next shade that i'm going to swatch for you is lady danger which is a matte formula now, the traditional matte formulas from MAC, I find a lot of variety in them. Some of them I'm like, they almost feel like amplified, whereas some of them are very, very dry. So this one is quite a creamy matte, I would say, particularly up against the retro matte formula. Lady Danger for you next to Dangerous here. There we go. I feel like there's more of a difference in the swatch than there actually is when they're on the face. So you guys will maybe be able to see that in the cutaways they are definitely different and I do intend to keep both of these but they are very very close however obviously if you're a fan of gingerbready orangey shades they are they're different enough to own both my intention is to keep both of these and to get rid of this one which is social which is another really, really beautiful shade, but it's slightly older in my collection. So I think just in terms of, we are trying to whittle it down and get rid of the stuff that I've had for forever. This one could maybe be the one to go. 
I mean, it still feels fine, you know, and I do still like it, but I feel like the three of them are very close. I actually feel like Social is maybe closer to Dangerous than it even is to Lady Danger. And just because this is the oldest one in the collection, I feel like this is the one that it makes sense to let go of. Oh, I don't know, I was quite decided that I was going to let go of this one now that I've swatched them I'm a bit like, oh, but I really like three of them. And I do really like the three of them, but no, I think I need to be a bit more ruthless than I've been for the last couple of rounds. So I'm going to get rid of Social purely because it's the oldest of the three. I feel like if they were all the same age, I'd be having an even tougher decision here. And I do really like Social. It's not that I've gone off the colour or anything, but it's it's definitely older than the other two. So I think we will say goodbye to this one. like those from my three orangey reds. These are like my three true reds. So first up we have MAC Red. I think I've got space to swatch this on my arm. So MAC Red I believe has been discontinued as a colour but it's just a really classic blue red. Very very pretty. The satin formula is quite an easy to wear one. You can see it looks really quite pinky when I'm putting it up against an arm that's full of your sort of gingerbread and terracotta orangey based shades but that is MAC Red at the bottom here Now slightly more famous than MAC Red we have Russian Red so I will do that one next so this is MAC's kind of most iconic classic red I'm going to be quite controversial here and say I'm not sure if I'm keen on Russian Red or not Again, looking at the bullet, it's one that I have used a lot because it is really old within my collection. But I feel like I've just got other reds that I like more. And I feel like as well, a lot of the time, I very rarely go for the classic red. I do think I suit more like chilli or, you know, a sort of brownier or more orangey red. I think I suit that more than a classic red. I think actually I'm going to let Russian red go. I've not decided yet about MAC Red. I do quite like it when I see it there, but I think I'm going to get rid of Russian Red. Controversial. My camera needed charge there, but whilst it was charging, I had swatched this was MAC Red and this is Russian Red. And I have swatched here, this is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon, which is actually really close to MAC Red. And this is Patrick Tad, That's Why She's Late, which I think is quite equivalent to Russian Red. But this has like so much more pigment, it's just so much richer looking. I don't really think the camera is actually picking that up all that well, but I feel like there's just so much more dimension to this than there is to Russian Red. Which is possibly just because of the age of mine, because it is really old, so it's it may well be if I had a really fresh Russian Red and was watching it that I wouldn't be seeing what I am, but... I am talking about the ones that I own, so I think on the basis of these two, I think both look nicer than MAC Red or Russian Red, I'm actually going to get rid of both MAC Red and Russian Red. And that leaves me with my last classic MAC Red to swatch, which is of course Ruby Woo, because do you even have a MAC lipstick collection if you don't have Ruby Woo? So Ruby Woo is, again, it's that retro matte formula, so it's that super, super matte. And it is really draggy on the lips, but it is really, really beautiful. So I think I will be keeping this one. I mean, you can see how draggy that is just from me swatching it there. You know, it is so super, super dry but it's a really, really pretty one. I feel like as well, it's because it is draggy, it's quite safe. You know, once it's on your lips, it's not, it's not going anywhere. So this is it from back here. Russian red's really iconic, so I, I can't really, do you know what it is? Ruby Woo is like, if anyone was a fan of Sarah Manning books growing up, like in a lot of her YA and like earlier titles, like Ruby Woo is name checked. Like I'm sure I bought my first Ruby Woo because of a Sarah Manning book and I always liked the characters who wore Ruby Woo not just in her books but in a lot of books like it's it was such an iconic one I always liked the connotations of those characters and what they're wearing of this lipstick said about them and I feel like I'm maybe a little bit emotional about it in that sense because it's 
corresponds with that sort of the place that Ruby Woo, and it sounds so mad to say this, but the place that Ruby Woo lived within sort of social culture, maybe particularly in the UK, I don't even know if this really translates outside of the UK, but I feel like for me, Ruby Woo is just so iconic of a certain moment and of a certain type of person. And those types of people always had attributes that I wanted to have when I grew up, if that makes any sense. Around that time that I was consuming that media in terms of the, you know, the singers and the performers and the actors who were wearing Ruby Woo alongside the book characters and the way that I perceived those people. You know, I, I feel like the sort of, the cultural identity of Ruby Woo, like, I almost want to hold on to that maybe more than I really do if I was to be totally just considering the lipstick that is swatched on my arm right now. But you know what? I've got rid of the other two classic reds, so I'm going to give myself a free pass. I'm going to keep Ruby Woo. So on to the last two lipsticks to consider. So these are what I would call my sort of brownie reds, like darker reds. So first of all, like, look at the packaging in this one. Isn't that beautiful? So Lauren bought me this for my birthday a few years ago um, and it's the Viva Glam one. It's a standard Viva Glam lipstick, but I think it was maybe 25 years of Viva Glam or something. Um, so they did this glittery red packaging, which I love. Um, so as you may be able to guess, this one is not getting decluttered. I love this lipstick a lot. There we go. So that is Viva Glam 1 here, which I'm definitely keeping. And then the very last lipstick to talk to you about is again from that Tempting Fate collection and it is the shade Avant Garnet. And I'll do this just above. Um, just there. And I will insert the cutaway. I didn't love my makeup the day that I wore this, to be honest, but I do really, really like the shade. So again, I am going to keep this actual shade. So what I will do now, I think, is wash my arm off again and come back, see how many we've decluttered, how many I'm keeping, and then look in my purgatory file and make some final decisions with you. So in terms of where we are, this is what I'm decluttering, this is what I'm keeping, and these four are ones that I want to keep but might try and force myself to decide between. Let's count here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten that I'm decluttering. But of the ten that I'm decluttering, right, let me pick out the ones that I definitely want to replace. So ones that this specific bullet will declutter from my collection but I will bring the same one in as my free lipstick because I think I've def I think I've got about 11 things plus this so I think I'll have enough for three lipsticks. So let me pick those three. So there are eight here that are definitely just leaving my collection. Here I have Chili and Dubonnet. So of the ones that I'm decluttering these two have just gone because of their age. They are colours that I really like. So I am thinking that two of my three lipsticks that I'll be able to get through the Back to Mac will be updates of these two. So I've got a third one. I could definitely get a third one and to be honest if I decluttered a bit more thoroughly I could possibly get a fourth one but I don't think I really have time for that. I mean in terms of like going into my blushes and stuff. So those two I think are definites although I mean I have a lot of brownie reds so do I really need another Dubonnet? Possibly not but those two would be my two from there that I would replace with newer versions of themselves. And then in terms of what's here, I've got this little mini of Sin. As I said, I think this is okay just now, but I don't think it's got long before it goes off. And I do really, really like this colour, so I possibly would declutter that one as well. That wouldn't count towards the Back to Mac because it's not a full size, I don't believe. So I wouldn't be getting, like, that wouldn't give me an extra item to give back, but I could declutter that one and still use the shade to get a third one of Sin and have it be a full sized Sin. So that's my possible three. The one that I am debating, what I am debating, you can tell we're now, we're now in casual vlogging mode down on the floor. The one I'm debating, I don't own it already, is Morange. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm presuming it's Morange rather than Morange, but you never quite know, do you? 
um so it's a beautiful it's more of a proper orange than like social or lady danger which are like orangey reds it's a proper bright just straight up orange that one is in my mind and the thing is i'm not paying for it because i'm getting it from taking back the empties so technically it's not breaking my rules of my no buy to get it because i'm not spending money but i feel a bit like if i replace three existing ones within my collection with just updated ones that feels more true to the essence of my no buy because i'm not giving myself new options as such i'm just replacing expired products with non-expired versions of the same thing I, I don't really know if that'll make sense but i hope you guys see what i'm saying here is basically it's not although it's bringing in technically a new thing it's bringing in an in-date version of a thing that i have that's expired whereas i feel like bringing Mirage in is actually widening my pool of choice it's adding a new shade to my collection but then technically I'm not paying for it. So it's not breaking my no buy because I'm not paying for it. And it, my no buy this year is very much about trying to save money rather than being quite as linked to the sort of uh, the sort of wanting of things as it kind of was when I first did my no buy in 2020. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I think I'm going to try and go on Monday, uh, which will be tomorrow to the day that I put this up, to do my back to Mac before I go on holiday. So... Uh, I'll have a day to see your comments so you can let me know what do you think what would you do stick to three that you own already and just get in date versions of them or would you let yourself bring in a shade that you didn't already own if you were on a no buy even though you're not spending money to bring in the new shade let me know what you think but that's that's what my thought process is I'm kind of stuck between three that I own already or bringing in a new shade but anyway so getting rid of replacing and then how many am i keeping let's go through that so in terms of keeping i have got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen and then possibly eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one so keeping twenty one and what did we see here? Getting out of 10, but if I replace two, technically eight. Okay, so that's about a third. I think I'd be okay with that, actually, if I kept these four and got rid of this. It would be going down by about a third. I think that'd be pretty good. But let me, let me swatch the four of these next to each other. So in order here, at the very bottom, we have Sin, then Diva, Studded Kiss, Dusty Grape, and then at the top, I pulled out D for Danger. So I feel like D for Danger is the one that I said I didn't love. And I do feel like you can see it's more pinky than any of the others. But I do think it's still... I think Dusty Grapes may be quite in the, the family there. I feel like I definitely prefer the bottom three to the top two. So I think I'm actually going to get rid of this one. So that makes it 9 that I'm declustering plus the 2 that I'm replacing for definite. So technically 11 that I've decided to get rid of today but 2 that I'll bring back in. So that leaves me with these bottom 3 which I do feel they're quite similar. Ugh, I don't know, should I maybe get rid of... I think if I was going to get rid of one of those bottom 3 it would be the one in the middle which is Diva. Like I think Studded Kiss is just it's slightly just... they're so close. But Studded Kiss is just a hint more brown which I think I prefer. And then Sin is just that little bit darker. I think I think I might get rid of Diva. Oh, that hurt. Because I do like it. But yeah, the three of them are so close. So I will keep Studded Kiss for definite. And then Sin, I'm definitely keeping in my collection. And I don't think this one... This one has life in it yet. But it will need replaced sooner or later. So I feel a bit like, do I just get another Sin or do I get Morange? What do we think? Let me know. It's definitely staying in my collection. It's just whether this exact bullet is going to stay or whether I will use my third lipstick to get a full size one of this and then declutter this or whether I will just keep this for now, possibly replace it at some point in the future when I'm not on a no buy or whatever. Keep this until it's actually officially turned and bring Mirange in. What do you guys think? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. Yeah, because I added Diva in. So 12 that we're getting rid of. And how many am I keeping? 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 12 going, 19 staying, 2 of those 12 coming back in. So technically 10 going, 21 staying I suppose by the time I bring those 2 technically back over but I think we'll, we'll settle for that. I feel happy with that. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what would you do. Would you bring in a new one or would you just replace my existing sin with a full sized in date one? Let me know what you think and I will see you in my next video. Bye.